This video is supported by Rocket Railways for all your model railway needs. Please check the link in the description below. Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall for the second part in the Cotsmore Shed scratch build. In the previous episode, if you haven't already watched it, we have looked at building the essential skeleton of the model and clad the exterior wall in its basic form. In this video, we're going to take that one step further and try and bring it to life a little bit more. The roof, uh, the option for the roof requires it to be removable and I'll show you how I've gone about doing that. There's the painting of it and then there's a few final details to be added at the end. I hope you enjoy it and I'll speak to you again at the end of the video. The internal detailing is more or less now done on the shed. I'll just run through it very quickly. Additional poles supports have been put at each end on both sides, front and rear. That has been used or made using 2.4 mil rod, uh, hollow rod from Plastrut. The haunches have also gone in essentially just little shims of triangular uh, plastic card cut to size and glued into position. What I really want to show you now is the process for going ahead with the roof. Now I'm running out of large sheets of plastic or a full length plastic so I only have enough to give me one full run across the shed. What I'm going to do is to layer the roof with three sheets of plastic card. Now that's partly because the two mil stuff's a pain in the backside to cut, particularly for the windows, but it also allows me to insert the window, or the glazing in and keep it in place. The first sheet are two pieces. The join is here just where the masking tape is, but I've made the cut between the two plastic cards where it runs over the top of one of the I-beams so you won't be able to see it whenever it's being viewed from through the front doors. With that done, the windows have then been cut out. They're approximately 20 mil up from the top and 20 mil down and they sit 25 mil wide. And the next thing to do is to take sheets of plastic card and you can hopefully see a two mil a line running along the bottom here that's two mil up from the bottom and essentially what will happen is i will place um an l girder from plastruct or evergreen styrene onto the end and that will create a channel for a gutter for the roof and i'm using just a piece of card to ensure that i butt it up with the top of the roof. And this card has been cut slightly shorter than the one in beneath and it essentially leaves us a little ridge. And then with further pieces, like so, top and bottom, we repeat that process all the way along the entire roof. With the second layer of plastic card now in place, you'll be able to clearly see the little ridge right round the window there. And that will allow us to place the clear plastic card in there. Before that gets done, you need to take the top layer of plastic card that you're going to use, flip it over, mark around the, the, the windows and cut those out. And then it's a good idea just to lay it back over just to make sure that everything lines up nicely in case you do need to do any sort of trimming of those windows. Once that's done start just cutting out little sheets of plastic, uh, clear plastic and then using the plastic weld they can be easily glued into place. And that's that job done and just repeat it for all the other windows.
addition that was added to the roof was to create the gutter line hopefully you can see there there is an l shape so the way the roof was laid on as it I mentioned previously there was an overhanging piece here that then has had some L girder fixed in underneath just glued right in underneath that particular L angle is from evergreen scale models and it's number 295 and it's the four mil stuff now to be honest you could go less than that i'm not sure if the product does go less than that but you could so on to the the end piece for the ribbing what we need to do first is add a four mil strip of plain plastic card to the top edge here now it wants to come to the height of where the uh the, the guttering sits which means it's only going to barely touch the edge of the wall but we will over that overlap that after the ribbing goes on which will add additional strength to it now with the top bits done we need to add a similar four mil strip down either side and indeed these are getting added on either side of the corner at each end With those two added, we can then add the ribbing right the way across. And this is the stuff we're using. It's from Slater's Plastic Card, and it's 0 0.020 by 0 0.079 inches. And that's reference 1015. Now, with that there, I have been using a little 4 mil, millimeter spacer. And then we just lay it up against that and glue now the end pieces are a little bit more footery to do than the sides because we obviously have to create that angle but we don't need to concern ourselves too much with the gap at the top because there will be another overlay of plastic card once this goes on you can see the effect that it has and it really is quite striking i think now in terms of the front end and also the doors on the side you will see that i've also added micro strip in around the outer edges of the door just to frame it I've also with in particular with the front it may not be so much of an issue with the, the rear but I started on the center strip first and worked out left to right from that because I wanted to make sure that everything was centered on the door and there was that balance left and right <laughs> final piece of the puzzle then is to just overlay another strip of plastic card on top this is just a millimeter wider than the previous piece and it'll just help hide any sort of slight gaps from the the ribbing being put in underneath as i work my way across the final section of the roof two things i wanted to point out one is i have the roof taped together in order that the first section that was done i can marry up the ribs on this section so that whenever it's in position it's going to look symmetrical throughout the second thing is when it comes to each of the windows i am using plastruct 90733 uh, styrene strip that's been cut to length and it's been glued in end on just to give a bit of a frame to each of the the windows we need to have these two roof sections or at least one of the roof sections removable so how do we keep the roof in place well what i've decided to go for and i've seen it used elsewhere and again it was a suggestion by mike mccabe um to try these on my own scratch bills i'm using uh, little neodymium magnets now these ones here are two mil by one mil incredibly fiddly to work with but i think they're going to do the job so what i've already done is i've installed the magnets into the um 
the main part of the building sort of running parallel with the uh the i beams and then we need to add them to the roof section too so it's a matter of taking a pin vise with a suitably sized drill bit in it you'll see that i've added a little bit of masking tape just to the bottom and that's just to stop me from going too far through this piece of plastic and if i just mark three lines on the plastic i then have a point in which i can actually drill it out and I'm I need to drill it fairly close to the edge. We don't have an awful lot to work with. I don't want to go any more with that. Now, the other thing you need to work out is in which way the polarity of your magnet is going. That is causing resistance there. So that end there needs to be on the inside of the magnet if i do it the other end that connects it so if that was to go inside then i would be getting the um the polarities countering each other so the the roof wouldn't go on so just check that before you do uh you would use the magnets use a blob of super glue and then we just drop one of these down into it a cocktail stick or maybe hopefully just grab it and take it in there that just needs repeated for the other two holes just a couple more things to add uh, and address and one of these is the capping that's running along the roof now initially what i had done was to add a strip the full length and have it hanging over the edge which was bent that it would sit on That it would sit then overlap this other side now it's a an error on my part what i should have I, what i haven't done is measured correctly here and as you can see here there's sort of unsightly gaps and these ribs actually run um underneath this capping so what i'm going to do is to take this side of the strip off and actually glue onto the edge here and then I'll create another strip to run the full length and we'll bend that over the top so that there is that overlap and it does hide any sort of unsightly gaps from where the ribbing didn't quite make it right the way to the top. Okay so I've corrected the initial strip of plastic and I've also cut myself another piece here. This is the full length of the shed and it measures 16 millimeters wide now hopefully you can see on it I have marked the center line of it there which is obviously eight millimeters and what I'm going to do is scribe with the craft knife just one pass down it enough to create a split that whenever I position it into place I can bend it over and it will sort of fall into line with the angle of the roof now I have run the craft knife down that and you can see the score line on it there now if i bend that it will crack but it's still holding its position this is quite difficult to do with such a long piece obviously there's not many buildings that are going to require this length of material just for one single piece having that bent means then we can lay over onto our building and it's just going to give a nice neat finish now if the crack or if the seam line along the center does split all together it's nothing to worry about because what we can do is take our plastic weld and run it right the way along the length of it whenever we get it glued into place the final element of the build are the emergency exit doors down both sides now i've gone fairly simple on these essentially we have one mil plastic card that's been cut to size to suit the door portal 
uh, a small pin vise drills two little holes into the door. Just be very careful, sort of two or three turns of the pin vise is all that's needed to create that hole. Once you have the hole in, take a piece of wire, bend it, that's the florist wire, bend the florist wire using a pair of pliers uh, and cut to the size. And then it's just a matter of dipping it into a little blob of super glue and affixing it to the door by just creating that slight angle to it um, gives the impression that it's one of those modern push bar emergency exit doors so this needs glued into place and i'm trying to sort of put it right slap bang in the middle of the the wall reset from the backhand side as well as at the front too just to give a nice finished appearance just before finish uh, there's one other thing technically that actually still needs to be done still need to put a box in for the roller shutters now i've already made these and i didn't put it on camera unfortunately but essentially it, are, it is just three strips of plastic card cut to approximately eight mil in length or width uh, and it's the length of each of the doors and then two little sides put on there's a little bit of support has been put in the interior too you will notice that there is a little notch just in the back of it this is the bit that will fix to the um the back wall or the the wall above the door and that little notch will just allow a piece of plain plastic card to sit in behind now that plastic card is oversized at the minute but what we want to do is that can sit in there the plain plastic card can then be placed in here cut to size and it'll just give a, a little drop of the door below the doorway there and with the wasp stripes on this door it'll look pretty good need to mask out all the windows on the roof on both sides and then the whole thing can get primed out before the uh, final colours go on to it. These will get primed as well and then painted in suitable colours going for aluminium and the boxes and um, it'll be the, as I said, the wasp stripe on the door as well. Just before I show you the final reveal of the build, essentially what has happened is that the entire structure was sprayed over with a Halfords grey primer. That was then left to dry and then it was sprayed over again with a Halfords rattle can paint. This time it was dove grey. Leaving that to dry fully, the entire interior of the structure, all those panels were masked out with Tamiya masking tape. This then allowed me to highlight the I-beams throughout the entire build in Halford's Ford Polar Grey. Finally, the uh, once all that was done, the masking tape removed, I then just gave it a coat of um, matte clear varnish just to seal it all in and to also take some of that shine that you get with those Halford car paints. That more or less concludes the build with um, only a little touch of paint on each of those door handles on the emergency exits. The little boxes for the roller shutters at the front doors were painted in Humbrol metallic, fitted into place and then those wasp stripes were added to the plastic uh, the plastic card sheet that was cut to size and then equally it was fitted into place once i had sort of decided on the depth that was required to bring it down below the door that it wouldn't hinder against any locomotives uh, running into the shed so there we go now there is an awful lot more um, detail that could be added to the shed indeed David is sending me over some extractor vents that we want to add to the roof of the building but internally wise we should really be looking at some of the extractor units hanging from the ceiling. Lighting needs to be fitted to the building too. 
there's also sort of PPE signage that could be added, emergency exit signs, that sort of thing there on the doors and even on the walls. And then also, you know, just the inclusion of additional pipe work up along the walls, such as for um, air hoses or lighting switches, that kind of thing there. But all those are things that can be added at a later date. And I do believe that David's looking to do some of that himself uh, as he moves forward with the shed build. The only thing we need to do now is try and find a way of packing this up safely and getting it shipped across to him. Uh, that's still a little bit of a head scratcher for, bo for both of us. Okay, there we go. I'm going to leave you now with some shots of the final build and really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a comment below. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And hopefully it won't be just as long until I'm back with my next series of videos. But for now, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.